We have special activity of those of at home dislocation, and these need proper diagnostic and treatment approach. And we have the third part at home dislocator. To know the pathology, we have to know the anatomy. And Dr. Atulki uh, just described the anatomy for us and the radiological significance. And uh, the main static stabilizer is the body, and then the soft tissue, the MDFL, and we have the diving stabilizer, which is the infarctus. So the activity could be bony or soft tissue, could be traumatic or atraumatic. And uh, regarding bony abnormality, we have just discussed that, the trochlear dysplasia, the pila alta, torsional abnormality, and also genomalgam would increase the uh, would increase your activity. Soft tissue could be tight lateral or lax medium. So when we treat, we have to treat this, and also it could be just muscle weakness. And the recent MRI study, it showed that up to 58% of these cases, they have multifactorial etiology. Who tend to have recurrence? This is our patient who showed us. A female, young, bilateral, atraumatic. So in our assessment, we have to assess the gait, the alignment, standing alignment, the rotational alignment, and also the Q angle, the J sign, and also the local axis. So we have to do it then after that imaging. Lateral X-ray is very helpful to have the uh, diagnose the PT uh, to diagnose the lateral alpha and also the long term to see the coronal alignment. MRI is also helpful. CT scan to see the rotation profile and to uh, diagnose the uh, to calculate the PT distance. So our surgical plan almost of the time includes these. Lateral release or lengthening, and we are more have more tend for lateral lengthening rather than release. Uh, if we have uh, lax needles, so to do in the upper reconstruction, and either could be bony procedure like uh, tibial tubercular transfer or stentomolar osteotomy, derotation osteotomy, or trachoplasty. The treatment should be individualized to each patient according to the pathology. So let's take this example. This is a dentist, young, have the first time traumatic dislocation, and uh, he is complaining of recurrent subluxation. He has normal alignment and normal Q angle. So what to do? <coughs> here it's clear that the best choice is to do a DFR reconstruction. And here's some technical uh, aspect. We have to do proper positioning for the patient. So when we tension the DFL, it should be around 30 to uh, 45 degrees. You want your incision. After that, you take the graph, you define your layer, this is very important, between two and three, the balance suture and then fix the uh, tendon to the patella. You then pass, you find the uh, femoral point fixation, this is very important. Uh, and we use uh, almost the X-ray always in these cases. And there are many points described in the literature about this, but I use the confluent point, which is a point between the uh, triangle, which is the continuation of the sat line, the receive cortex, and the receive the And this is equivalent to a point between the medial epicondyle and the epicondyle. After that, you pass the graph, and you then uh, pass the suture in the femoral tendon, and the shift, shift the suture, and pass the graph in the femoral tendon. And here, very important trick is to have your guide wire in the a tunnel before passing the graph to make it uh, easy definition because sometimes difficult if you pass the graph to find it uh, the whole letter. And you make sure that it's not tight, this is very critical. And you can put the screw before advancement, just check the stability and then advance the screw. And here the patient it should have uh, uh, not tight in the FR reconstruction and always comparable to the other side, otherwise you may have stiffness and we cannot get this range of motion. This is other types of fixation in the lateral side or femoral side, but whatever you <coughs> use for fixation, please avoid uh, having improper layer or improper point fixation or make it tight. This is a case where I did revision, it was very tight. And if you see in the next slide here, that it was over the retin axis. And the patient has pain and stiffness, and once he's doing flexion, this impinge causing impingement of the lateral traction to the combine. So here the, uh, the graph, why it should be here in this layer. This is the first 
uh, problem. And the second, that he has the teeth, the patellar side is very low. And this is very important, not the plastic way. Here it is, and here it is. Now I show you these two cases uh, where MBFL was not needed. These patients have abnormal bone morphology. And this is the first case. The patient has a bulbous deformity. So what to do? We calculate with the deformity and found that she needs a distal femoral insertion. And also, she has patella alpha and a loose body, and she has increased TTG G distance. And this means that she needs tibia to vector transfer. So we did our plan, and in each patient, we make this problem list. And when you do that, then ask yourself what we have to do. So this patient needs distal femoral osteotomy, tibia to vector transfer. She has lax medial bulk. Do I need to do MFL reconstruction or not? Let's see. And she has loose body, she needs uh, 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 arthroscopy. So here the laxity you see in row, we define our incisions, and then after that, make this a femoral osteotomy using unimetric based technique, and then after that, doing the tibia to vector transfer. And if you see here the video, it is stable. So in this patient, though we'll have patellar instability, we didn't need to do a paper reconstruction. And here, arthroscopy for removal of loose body, and check the controls of the patella. Here, the boss and very important here, doing tibia to bed to transfer, uh, transfer to have it long enough for fixation and slope the edge not to cause fracture or union. And here the patient after doing both sides, and you see there is no more J sign. Here another case, uh, he's also young active, he has recurrent patellar subluxation, very conservative treatment, and by our <coughs> evaluation, you see that the, he has high patella and also increased TTG distance and if you end it, Yeah, you see, very high view angle with increased TTG distance. So what else in our evaluation? What else? Rotation. And if you see, he has very high internal rotation, which means that he has a very high femoral antiversion angle. So if we do MBFR reconstruction for this patient, we'll fail. And what we do, <coughs> rotational osteotomy for the patient, and this is a good trick to define the degree of rotation. And this is after correction of the rotational malalignment. And after that, we did the tibial to vector transfer, same session. And it's very important in this type of surgery to have early range of motion to avoid stiffness. And here, after correction and alignment. And here you see it's nice, uh, heal nicely, uh, both osteotomies. This is uh, Dr. Blass, and Dr. Schutter will tell us more about this. And by conclusion, there are different types of patellar instability. Each individual patient should be evaluated for uh, uh, the rotational alignment, the corona alignment, TTG distance, the presence of trochoblasty before taking the treatment decision. And also, a uh, significant point of deformity should be corrected before doing MBFR reconstruction or same session. Otherwise, you may end with failed MBFR reconstruction. Many techniques are available, but whatever technique you use for fixation, please avoid making type, put it in the proper layer, not in the wrong one, and also choose a proper uh, point fixation in the femur and in the vertebra. Thank you.